In this PowerPoint, we'll begin discussing chemical quantities and the composition of pure substances and mixtures. In particular, we'll focus on the mole concept as the foundation of our relationships for chemical quantities. There are many situations where it's very important to precisely quantify the amounts of chemicals that you're dealing with. Rocket fuel is just one example. So rocket fuel is a mixture of solids combined in precisely measured amounts. And when this mixture is ignited, it starts a powerful series of reactions that generate large amounts of gases. These gases are ejected from the rocket through a nozzle that produces the thrust necessary to lift the rocket into the air. Now for the success of the rocket launch, it's critical that the solids and the fuel are present in the precise amounts needed to optimize that chemical reaction safely. In order to determine the precise amounts necessary, it's important to be able to quantify the amounts of each chemical appropriately in terms of both mass and the number of molecules reacting. There are two main methods for quantifying matter, by mass and by number. We deal with both types of measurements on a daily basis in our life. For example, we buy our flour by the pound, but we always buy our eggs by the dozen. Some substances are much easier to measure by mass, and others by number. In chemistry, we do have to deal with both types of measurements. It can be very important for us to know the individual number of atoms or molecules that combine in a chemical compound or reaction. However, we can't actually count atoms and molecules in any substances in real life. We can measure masses, though. The mole is a unit in chemistry that allows us to connect the number of atoms or molecules in any substance to its mass. I know most people think of this guy when they hear the term mole, and it's just important to remember that this is not the type of mole that we're referring to in chemistry. In chemistry, the mole is simply a counting unit. It's like the terms pair or dozen or gross. Each of these terms refers to a specific amount of something. For example, if I told you I had, I had a dozen donuts, you would know that I had 12 donuts. If I tell you that I have a mole of donuts, it means that I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd donuts. To give you an idea of how big this number really is, if I really had a mole of donuts, they would cover the surface of the earth to a depth of five miles. If I had a mole of basketballs, I could create an entire planet of basketballs the size of the Earth itself. And if I had a mole of turkeys, I could create 16 Earth-sized planets. But one mole of water molecules can be found in 18 milliliters of water. That's roughly the equivalent of half the volume of a shot glass, by the way. While this number may seem ludicrously large, it's a very appropriate value for translating the microscopic scale of the atom into our macroscopic world. The formal definition of the mole is the amount of a substance containing the same number of atoms, or if it's a compound, molecules or ions, as the number of atoms found in exactly 12 grams of a sample of pure carbon-12 isotope. So here's a picture of what a mole looks like for several different elements. Notice that the actual masses of each of these elements is different. That's because each element has a different sized atom. But each sample shown here contains exactly the same number of atoms. One mole, or 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So this number is known as Avogadro's number, after the Italian scientist who proposed the idea that we could quantify matter in this way. This definition also gives us an easy way to determine the masses of one mole of any pure substance in grams. So the true atomic mass of any atom of the isotope carbon-12 is exactly 12 AMU. If we scale this to different elements and determine the mass of one mole of those elements, 
it turns out that one mole of any element is simply equal to its periodic table mass in the units of grams. This leads us to an important fact about the average atomic mass values given on the periodic table. They can be interpreted in two ways depending on the units we use. First, in units of AMU, they represent the average atomic mass of one atom of that particular element. But they can also represent the mass in grams of one mole or 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of that element. When we're dealing with units of grams associated with that number, we call it the molar mass. So the mole concept gives us two fundamental equivalences that we can use to convert between numbers on the atomic scale and masses that we can measure on the macroscopic scale. Our next step will be to discuss how to do these conversions and how we can apply these concepts to compounds as well. In summary, the mole is a counting unit in chemistry that allows us to relate numbers of atoms to masses of an element in grams. And there are two fundamental equivalences associated with it. One mole equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, which is known as Avogadro's number. And one mole equals the periodic table mass of the element in grams per mole. And this is known as the molar mass.